Now we are going to start with Unit 4, page number 42 to 43. As we have already discussed that environment consists of two things, the living parts and the non-living parts. The living parts are basically your plants, humans and animals. Now we are going to talk about the non-living parts. Non-living parts are also very much important as the living parts of the environment and they also help the living parts like human, plants and animals. So we are going to discuss the components of the environment one by one. Firstly, the most important component of the environment is water. We are going to discuss some basic important functions of the water that why it is important. Water is most important for us because our body is made up of 70% of water. From 100%, 70% of your body, body is composed of water. Living things need water for their various life functions. All the living things, whether they are plants, they are animals, they are humans, they need water. Water is their basic requirement. Water is needed for their basic life functions, life processes, like helps to digest food. Without water, there, is, there can be no digestion because to dissolve the food in the body, water is very important. The chemical changes in the body can only take place in water. All the chemical reactions that uh, if you take example of the food, that how food is changing, all these processes, they take place because of water. Plants need water for the process of photosynthesis. When you talk about photosynthesis, it is the process basically known as food making process for the plants. Plants can are able to make their own food. So they need four basic things. But the most important thing that the plants need to make their food is water. So water, the first component of the environment is water and it is very important for us. Now we are going to discuss the second non-living component of the environment that is your air. Here if you look at your earth, there is a blanket or a layer around the earth. This blanket or the layer is known as air. It helps your earth against the harmful radiations or the harmful rays directly reaching to the earth. If there is no layer of air present, then the rays will directly reach the earth and increase the temperature of the earth. Then we are going to discuss some important points and functions of the air. Air basically contains different gases. These gases can be nitrogen, hydrogen. Every gas present in the air has its different function. But the basic two major gases that we are going to discuss are oxygen and carbon dioxide. First of all, we are going to talk about oxygen. When you talk about oxygen, we breathe in oxygen. That oxygen, when we breathe in, when we inhale, it goes into our body and gets mixed with the food. And from the food, it helps our body to get energy. Basically, we breathe in oxygen to get energy from the food. Then, when you talk about carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide is we breathe out from our body the gas that is known as carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide, that carbon dioxide is needed by the plants and the plants use it to make their own food. That is, plants use it for their food making process that is photosynthesis. So here, there is an important point that an exchange of gases, exchange means changing of gases take place like as human or animals, when we breathe in oxygen, we take that oxygen and we give out carbon dioxide. That carbon dioxide goes to the plants. Plants take that carbon dioxide, make their food through the process of photosynthesis and give out oxygen that oxygen gets transferred to the living things. So here you can also see that air contains different gases and there is exchange of different gases that occurs. So this is our second important component of the environment. Now we are going to start with the fourth component of the environment. Our unit is 5, page number 42, 43 to 44. When we talk about minerals, minerals are basically the substances that occur naturally. Uh, they are not found from animals or plants. Basically, they are the dead remains that are present in the soil. So when you talk about minerals, minerals are basically found in the soil. One question is, why do we need minerals? When you talk about living things, 
Living things, as you know that living things are of three major types, plants, animals and humans. They need minerals for two things, for growth and for health. Now, how do living things take minerals? How do they get minerals? This is a very important question. When you talk about the plants, plants take minerals from the roots. When you talk about animals, animals take minerals from the plants. This means when they eat the plant, we are talking about the herbivores animals, where when they take, uh, the, when they gaze on the plants, when they eat the plant, they get the mineral. When you talk about humans, humans have two ways of getting the minerals. They are, some of the, when they eat plants, like major source of plants that we use are fruits and vegetables. So when you talk about fruits and vegetables, they basically contain minerals. They give minerals, vitamin and minerals. So the plants, like fruits and vegetables, they give minerals to humans. And when the humans eat other animals, they also get minerals. So when you talk about the sources, plants get minerals from the roots, animals from the plants, and humans from both plants and animals. Now we are going to talk about. Now we are going to talk about the fourth, comp fifth component of the environment that is life. When you talk about light, our major source of light is the sun, the sunlight. Sunlight is, sunlight is needed by every living thing for their life functions. Like when you talk about sunlight, plants take sunlight for the process of photosynthesis. This is a process which is needed by the plants to make their own food. Plant, basically when you talk about photosynthesis, plant needs three major things that are carbon dioxide, sunlight and water. When the animals eat the plants, they like different kinds of animals, they can be like goat, deer. When they eat the plant, they get the sunlight. When you talk about humans, when humans eat plants or the animals, that sunlight is transferred to the human body. So, as we can see that there is a cycle that runs, that sunlight plants take, plants make their own food, that plant is eaten by the animals and the animals get their sunlight and then the humans get the sunlight through the animals when they eat it. Now to have a clear concept of the characteristics of environment, there are two activities that are given on page number 43. These are discuss and answer and concept check. You can attend these activities and see how clear you learn this topic. Thank you.